Hello guys, so welcome to our first lecture in uh, our course Computer Architecture 1, Assembly Language. Uh, with you is Dr. Mustafa Abdelrahim. I'm an assistant professor here at the department. And let's start. So just a reminder, this is our textbook, Barry Bray, which is, uh, you know, Intel microprocessors. And actually this book, you know, covers many, many uh, processors from Intel. Here is the outline of this uh, lecture, basically. Uh, first, we're going to explore some important definition and concepts. Then we're going to cover some historical background about Intel architecture and the processors. Some of them, not all of them. Then we're going to uh, have some uh, overview about uh, microprocessor-based system, how to connect or how to put a processor in a system. Uh, we're going to de uh, de demonstrate afterwards the numbering systems that you can use uh, when you deal with a processor and the computer data format, which you can, you can use with a computer. Let's start first by some definitions here. First, what's a microprocessor? So it's basically an integrated circuit that can do or execute some function. And it's the heart, it's the heart of, the, of your computer system or the computing system. It's also some, sometimes called uh, CPU or central processing unit because basically it's the, the processing the, the unit that makes the processor for the system. And it also make, uh, it has also control function. So it can process and it can control at the same time. What kind of control it do? It controls the memory, the memory in your system, in your computer basically. I.O. devices like, for example, you know, uh, a mouse, keyboard, uh, camera, any peripheral that is connected to your uh, uh, computer is controlled via this uh, processor. And the connections between all such systems using what is called the buses. So let's, let's see what is buses. Buses is basically a medium, just a set of wires, basically. Uh, upon which the processor will control all the peripherals or all the devices connected to it, basically the system. So since you have a multiple uh, categories of this, of the, of this in the, inside of the system, then you have also multiple buses. So you have what's mm -hmm. called address bus, in which the uh, microprocessor used to control the, uh, or, or choose what kind of peripheral it wanna communicate to. You have the data bus upon which the microprocessor will send and receive data to, to the system, to multiple parts in the system. And you have the control buses, which is basically, you know, wires that transfer signals to, for example, enable or disable some module. Any microprocessor can perform three main tasks data transfer and simple decision or make basically the flow. Like if you guys know uh, programming languages, you know, if a statement, this is called the control or flow or program for flow, which is basically based on some condition, it will take some decision. And it also do arithmetic like add uh, or subtract, multiply, divide to compare uh, processors together, we use three main, there are many metrics, but uh, the basic three metrics, what's called an instruction set, bandwidth, and the clock close speed. The instruction set is basically the instructions, you know, that this uh, computer or this processor can execute. And it's different from uh, a processor to another processor. The bandwidth is basically how many bits can be processed at the same time in one instruction, for example. The clock speed defines how many instructions can be executed uh, per cycle or per second also. And of course, if you have more, if you have, if, if the clock speed is more, then, you know, uh, you're gonna have more uh, or faster uh, execution. Let's now, you know, review uh, the advancement in 
uh, microprocessor fabrication, especially from Intel, because this is our focus in this course. The world's first electronic microprocessor was Intel 4004. Don't, don't we have computers before? Before 1971, yes, we have, but it was not electronic computer. It was based or fabricated using some other technologies. But the first electronic microprocessor was Intel 404. It was a four bit processor. I mean, for example, the memory, if you have a memory in your system like this, each location was four bit. Each variable can be represented with four bits. The instruction set is 45 instructions, which is of course very low, but it was very good at that, at that time. The speed was 50 kilo instructions per second, or 50,000, uh, you can say approximately 50,000 instructions per second, which was slow or 50% slower than uh, any computer which was uh, implemented in uh, 1946, but it was 30 tons. So just to compare 30 tons to small number of ounces uh, of this Intel, it was actually less than one ounce. The second processor was the 8008, and this one was 8-bit. So this is the major advancement over the 404. You doubled the bit, the bit width from four to eight. So basically for the same size of memory, you're gonna have double you know, uh, the storage. The memory itself has been increased to 16 kilobytes and the byte is 8-bit. And the kilo is not 1,000. Kilo here is, uh, is 2 to the power of 10, which is uh, 1,024. Uh, the number of instructions has increased a little bit from 45 to 48, not a big deal. But still, we have some improvement over the 404. The 8080 uh, microprocessor, which was done in 1973. This one has four times memory, which is means 64 kilobyte. Remember it was 16 kilo in the 8008. And the speed is 10 x faster. It reaches approximately half a million instructions per second. 8085, this was maybe basically the first disk uh, processor, which is complex instruction set uh, computer, which has a lot, a lot of instructions. So compare it, it, it has 246 instructions, to the 45 instructions in 404, or 48 instructions, 48 instructions in 8008. And that was slightly faster. It was around, you know, uh, two thirds of, uh, of a million instructions per second. And this was the last 8-bit microprocessor. Then we go to the first 16-bit microprocessors, 8086 and 8088 in 1978 and 1979, respectively. This has tremendous, you know, instructions per second, 25 million instructions per second. Compare it to the, you know, less than 1 million. Less than 1 million here to 25 million instructions per second. 
you see guys how the you know the technology advances year after year but the rate of advancement is really big for for in a small duration of time we have increased the speed more than 25 times This was the first uh, processors to have a divide and to multiply uh, instructions. So before that, to do a multiply or divide, you use uh, division or subtraction. So you can do it, but indirectly. Now you can do it directly. And the memory become or reaches, you know, one megabyte, which is really big at the time, of course. Follow that two processors, 8386 and 8486. Nothing major, basically, between them. It's started by the, by the 8386. This was Intel's first 32-bit microprocessor. And it, it addresses up to four gigabytes of memory. So the major, two major, you know, uh, advancement here. 32-bit instructions and it handles up to four gigabytes of memory. The 8486, its major improvement is that some instructions in, or many instructions in the 8386 take two cycles to be executed. Half of these instructions now take one clock cycle only, which is, of course, major major achievement. Then we reached the Pentium microprocessors in the 90s, which has tremendous, you know, uh, clock speed, which reaches uh, to uh, 233 mega megahertz. The speed of the instructions per, per cycles in, per second increased a lot to 110, and the cache size increased uh, to 16 versus 8. There was caches before, but it was, you know, really small in size. It's still the memory up to 4 giga, but the data bus now to the memory becomes 30, can reach 64 bits before it was 32. The Pentium Pro can execute up to three instructions at, a, at the same time in parallel. And this was maybe the first parallelism, major parallelism basically in instructions execution. And you can address up to 64 gigabyte memory. Pentium 3, still 32-bit microprocessor. Still, we uh, can address up to 64 gigabyte memory, but the frequency increased to 800 megahertz. So five times big, faster. Bentium Core 2 microprocessor. This was also has a major adv uh, achievement in which Intel could re replace the aluminum links inside the chip by uh, copper, which has better conductivity. So they can increase or they could increase the frequency up to three gigahertz, from eight megahertz to three gigahertz. And they also could integrate more circuits in one chip because they use, you know, a very advanced technology called the 45 nanometer technology. And the latest achievement of Intel, which is uh, i3 processors, like i3, i5, i7, i9 also, okay? And the major achievement here is uh, in integration of multiple cores. Like for example, i7 has six cores, or eight cores, I can't remember exactly, but you have many cores, so you can execute, you know, tasks in barrel. You can basically apply multi-threaded applications. That's it, guys, for this part of the lecture. Bye-bye.